For my father, the family is the center of his life. His love for us has been the driving force behind all that he's achieved. But my father's life story is deeply entwined with the destiny of his mother country, Lithuania, though we begin in Siberia. He was born 80 years ago on April 16th in the little village of Chornia Padinia, where his ancestors had been deported in 1863 by the Tsar. He saw Lithuania for the first time when he was four, settling in tiny Gelton Pamushis. His only sister, Victoria, remembers a little boy who loved to splash in puddles and was a very good student. I, I go too far. In 1995, we all took a sentimental trip to visit my father's boyhood home. Do you see that island there, little island? Sure. Uh -huh. That's where I used to swim, from this side to the other. <laughs> where, what happened with the, with the uh, uh, pond? Where are those ponds? <laughs> the pond used to stand. Yeah. The house where he lived with his parents still stands. His father had a little store in front. Uh, that was uh, the Nima Marcus. <laughs> There was Dad's bed, the master bedroom, the stove, and the table where his mother sewed. After military school, Dad went to the University of Vilnius, where he fell in love with the beautiful champion basketball player, Alexandra Kalvianas. And I saw this one, <laughs> one girl, black hair, dark eyes, you know. <laughs> I mean, nobody could stop her, you know, running, uh, you know, but, but and I think she got most of the points. And, you know, I noticed this tall, skinny, very serious man, but I didn't pay attention to, to him. And he sort of started talking to me. So, you know, I said, who is this guy, you know? He started telling me how he knew me back in high school, how he noticed me, la 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 la, and so forth and so forth. And uh, I was impressed because, you know, he's a talker, as you know, you know, you can stop him. And I bet some stories he invented, even if it's not, <laughs> maybe not true. And so she married the tall, skinny guy in August 1941. <laughs> I was born two years later, at the height of the war. When the Russian communists occupied Vilnius in 1944, we were forced to escape, never knowing when we would return to Lithuania. After several months in Germany, we were among thousands of refugees at the train station, desperate to leave. An army hospital train arrived. And the train stopped and the soldiers with the open window and they said, they said, give me the girl, give me the girl. And you know, it's, it's, it's stupid. How I could give the girl? I gave you to him and then he pulled me in. Pulled, her. pulled me in. And I said, my man, my man, you know, my husband, where is my husband? I was fighting, I got to that, to that window, and two of the German soldiers, wounded, I know they were, you know, the bandage, had some, pulled me in also. The train went on to Dresden, February 13th, 1945. We pulled out maybe 20 miles or something, maybe even less, and the train stopped. 
and then the bombing of Dresden came. And planes after planes were going Fire. and going, and far away we see that we saw the fires, the whole city and burning, and we were standing there. These are, I would say, maybe the most critical oh. moments in, in our life. They really, really escaped. We arrived in New York in 1947, thanks to a fellowship from Yale University, where Dad got his PhD in economics. We loved America, our new home, and Dad prospered as an entrepreneur. Our family grew with the arrival of four handsome sons. When I was three or four years old, and Dad took me into the ocean, and I didn't know how to swim, and I remember grabbing onto his neck. Daddy, Daddy, don't let go, don't let go. Uh, he was laughing, don't worry, I have you, you know, I don't worry. I think throughout the years, the one quality that I've always enjoyed about my relationship with Dad is, is the security I have with him, that if I ever have a problem, I can always come to him. He is the most generous person. He's never asked for himself. His first thought is always to give to his children and to his grandchildren, and that's been so consistent over the years. I look at my life and his life, and for what he, he went through to, to give us everything that we had. I mean, let's face it, we, uh, we had a great, great opportunity to view the world and, and, and the best things in life. Uh, he, he gave us an opportunity to, uh, to experience. As the good years went by, Dad took up hunting, swimming, and discovered the world of travel. Fly the ocean in a silver plane. And the pleasure of creating the most magnificent gardens in East Hampton and Cat Key. And now we here and drink. <laughs> famous, famous Gazeka's rare tropical fruit garden. <laughs> and as we look here, and see our grapefruits and kumquats, bananas, papayas, and uh, sugarcane. Yeah, sugarcane. Well, when I'm all alone by myself, I pick up the cane and chew it. <laughs> and what he loved most was playing golf with his sons. I mean, he wanted us to take up this activity because it is a lot like life. And once he got us on the road, the, the message of the, of the game would come through to us without his having to say anything about it. I know that nothing makes him happier than to go out and spend three hours, four hours with us on the golf course. But our family has had its share of pain and sadness. My brother Alex died when he was 22. In order for life to be full, uh, there has to be also suffering. In a very tragic way, my life is enriched by, by this. I have much deeper understanding of life. My father has always believed that there is no greater cause in life than man's freedom. And for 50 years, he worked to achieve that dream for his homeland. I knew, and I did not know how, that one day Lithuania is going to be free because the communism is going to collapse. So it was with unbelievable excitement we flew to Vilnius on March the 11th, 1990, to witness Lithuania's historic break from the Soviet Union. Dad recalled those momentous hours. We got here into the hall at a time when Armament was already preparing to declare the independence. Then all kind of the question, it took so that the independence declaration came almost uh, after the midnight. And at last, the symbol of the hammer and sickle was obliterated forever. The people waiting outside were jubilant, shouting, thank you. Thank you, Lithuania. Dad has been honored with the highest awards the country can bestow for his commitment to the struggle for freedom 
and his work for Lithuania's economic progress with the founding of Omnitel in partnership with Motorola. Even his old high school sang his praises. And then America acknowledged his many achievements as an immigrant with the Medal of Freedom on Ellis Island. Representing the Lithuanian community, ladies and gentlemen, the chairman of Neris, Joseph Kasikas. But nothing would have been possible without the love and support of Alexandra, his wife of 57 years. My father knows that his long life has been blessed, for which he is grateful to Almighty God. It was he who helped, who led my life and, and created uh, such unbelievable joy and, and pleasure, and most of all, gave me the, the opportunity to see the miracle of his creation. Grandchildren growing, playing, playing uh, baseball, soccer, running all around. <laughs> and they were playing the same way, the same place there. Now my grandchildren doing that. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? And I think to myself, what a wonderful world.